Hi, my name is Belgica and I make acting related videos and today we're going to talk about FICOR. I don't really know what it is, so Jackie is here today to help us learn what FICOR is and if it is right for you. Hi, Belica. Thanks again for having me. My name is Jackie Dallas, and I am a SAG AFTRA actress. I work in television, I work in film, and I'm probably best known for my roles on Stranger Things, Criminal Minds, NCIS New Orleans, and The Residents. I do also have a consulting business where I work with actors who are either up and coming or new to the scene or just looking to bring their career up to the next level. We could talk about um, getting started in the industry, any questions you might have, or even just going over your materials and kind of refining it for the next stage in your career. So I actually don't know anything about this subject. I've definitely heard it before, and maybe once you start talking, I'll be like, oh yeah, but what what is FICOR? So FICOR <laughs> is, is kind of a loophole. SAG likes to call it a fee-paying non-member, or FPNM. It's like a separate category where once you become eligible, instead of joining the union, you would elect to become FICOR. So you pay less in dues as far as an initiation fee goes. You maintain the ability to work on both union and non-union productions. So remember Global Rule 1, once you join SAG, you can no longer do non-union work. By joining FICOR, you can still continue to do non-union work while still auditioning and being eligible to go out for union work. The downsides of FICOR is you lose all of the member-only benefits. So mm -hmm. you don't get to use SAG on your resume. You don't get a SAG number or card. Um, you don't get to go to any of the events, any of the classes or the workshops or the screeners or the um, you know award ceremony events. You don't get the screeners. You can't vote for the SAG awards. Um, any of the discounts you know, the traveling discounts or the gym memberships that we talked about, you don't get any of those. So basically you can continue to work union and non-union, but that's about the end as far as the perks go. So by being FICOR, you know, you lose a lot of the members only benefits. I do want to point out though, that you can still be eligible for the pension and the healthcare insurance. Once again, those are based off of a, a minimum amount of money that you would make in the pe in the previous year. Even if you're working non-union jobs, as long as you make the minimum quota in union jobs, you can still be eligible for the healthcare and you can still have money put towards your pension. So that's one benefit that will not be affected by you going into FICOR. There's also been talk about a stigma surrounding going FICOR where it undermines the union, it, kind of uh, takes away from their ability to, you know, bargain for you and make sure that you get your day rates and everything else because if you're working non-union projects, chances are you're saying that you're willing to accept working for less than what SAG says you should be paid. So they don't really appreciate that too, too much. But mm -hmm. the real talk is, is most casting directors and most agents and managers that I've spoken to don't pay a lot of attention if you are FICOR versus SAG. So they're not going to hold it against you. At the end of the day, the person who is best fit for the role, who does the best audition, they're the ones that's going to get cast regardless of whether you're SAG or you're FICOR. You still can't be non-union. You have to be at least SAG eligible. The best person for the role will get the role regardless of FICOR status. There is a bit of a stigma also in regards to joining the union again later, which can be done. It's a case by case application. Essentially, you have to repay the dues, the initiation fees to get back into the union or to join it for the first time if you've never joined before. And I think you have to submit like in writing why you were FICOR to begin with. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know anyone who's actually gone through the process of that, but from what I understand, um, it's a case by case on whether they allow you to join SAG again afterwards. For FICOR, how do you how do you become FICOR? Did you already go through that? My wheels are turning again. I'm just like, <laughs> FICOR, I was like, you're in the middle, you don't get the benefits, but you can audition. So how do you become FICOR? So FICOR is a decision that you make usually up front um, before you've joined SAG. So let's say you're eligible. You can join FICOR instead of joining SAG. And that basically says, Yes, I would love to audition for SAG roles, but I also still want to work non-union. It's not always 
a bad idea. It's a case by case basis for everyone, but honestly, some considerations. If you live in a small market where the majority of your opportunities are going to be non-union, it might not be worth giving all of that up. Bay Area is a great example. We do yeah, get, say. yeah, you do get um, a handful of big movies and Netflix shows that come through there in film and maybe cast a couple of day players and co-stars here and there. You don't want to miss out on those opportunities by staying non-union necessarily but maybe you've worked too many days as a background actor and now you're in a position where you have to join you're a must join if you join FICOR you can still continue to do both yeah yeah that really does sound like an ideal position to be in if you are in the Bay Area because for me for example when I was in the Bay Area and I was working as an actress full-time I would get like one or two gigs every single week and sometimes it would be a speaking role in a commercial in a tech commercial and then sometimes it'd just be like an extra on like 13 reasons why or something and just having the ability to know that or having the ability to have my agent submit me to everything is amazing yeah yeah, yeah. I mean it's just it's up to the individual you know it depends on where you are, kind of assess like, what's the bulk of your jobs and opportunities? Are you working mostly non-union? Then it might be best for you to be able to continue to work non-union, you know? It's just sometimes some of the markets just don't have a lot of SAG work and that's just the reality. If you don't live in LA or New York or Atlanta, there's always gonna be way more non-union opportunities, so. You have to do what's best for you in your situation. Yeah, you really do have to think about what you're willing to do or not because maybe you're like, I only want jobs that are going to pay me above $1,000, above $2,000. But then there's some people that are like, I really just enjoy it. Right. And I mean, people, it's not always about the money, right? Uh, sometimes you just want to work on really cool stories. And sometimes yeah. indie filmmakers have the best stories and they're non-union productions. Like you were saying, a lot of commercials, a lot of commercials are mostly non-union. Um, and some of them still pay a lot. <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, it's definitely a trade-off. It's kind of understanding where you are in your career um, what your what you know you're in what you know and have established what you know and are capable of doing and working what's available yeah there's a lot of factors I I do have one other question so once you're FICOR you said that you can rejoin SAG so is there a fee to joining FICOR is it the same three thousand dollars and then once you want to join SAG you would pay the other like you would pay that three thousand dollars again to join FICOR it's not three thousand dollars it's less than that I don't know the exact Exact amount because once again I think it might be market dependent I'm not entirely sure but it's not the full three thousand dollars so okay. you would pay whatever that amount is to become FICOR later when you decide to join SAG I believe you have to pay the full initiation fee okay I'll definitely I can just look it up and see what the rules are right now um, if I can find that information because I know sometimes it's hard to find information about sag -Aftra. I hope this video really helped you figure out if you would like to do FICOR or just go ahead and join sag -Aftra. And at the end of every video, I feature another channel. This is today's channel. If you would like to be featured on my next video, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and leave me a comment.